Good morning, Europe. It is Tuesday, the 23rd of August. I'm Helena Humphrey. Here are your top stories. Ukraine marks its national flag day, but President Zelensky bans public celebration as the country braces for more Russian attacks. Moscow says Ukrainian special services were behind the car bomb that killed the daughter of a prominent Putin ally. Kiev denies the allegations. And former U.S. President Donald Trump is suing the Department of Justice to freeze the investigation into documents found at his Mar-a-Lago estate. Ukraine shows off captured Russian armored vehicles before a city curfew in Kyiv. President Vladimir Zelensky has banned rallies marking the country's two annual celebrations, today's National Flag Day and Independence Day on Wednesday. Ukraine fears an escalation of Russian attacks following the killing of the daughter of one of Vladimir Putin's allies in a car bombing near Moscow at the weekend. Dear Ukrainians, especially these days when we celebrate the day of our flag and the day of our independence, if you are somewhere abroad, please remind others about Ukraine there. Be there with the Ukrainian flag and spread the truth about the crimes of the occupiers. The death toll in Russian rocket attacks on hostile dormitories in Ukraine's second largest city of Kharkiv last week has risen to 25. The rescue operation ended on Monday with eight bodies still unidentified. Around 40 injured are recovering in hospitals. On the military front, almost 9,000 Ukrainian soldiers have been killed since Russia launched its invasion. It's the first time Ukraine's revealed the scale of its military losses. Meanwhile, under the threat of Russian attacks and a war that stopped all football in Ukraine, a new league season starts today. All games in the 16-team league will be played in and around Kyiv and further west. If the sirens sound, players must dash to bomb shelters in the stadiums. The European Union says it could increase its military involvement in Ukraine's war effort. The 27 member states are considering combat training for Ukrainian soldiers in a major mission that, if it goes ahead, would take place in neighbouring countries. EU Foreign Affairs Chief Joseph Boré justified its deliberations. It seems reasonable that a war that lasts and seems to be going to last should require an effort not only in terms of equipment supplies but also in terms of training and for the organization of the army and this is what is being discussed among the member states and will be discussed politically next week, next Monday in Prague within the Council of Defence Ministers and I hope that it will be approved. Meanwhile, as the war rumbles on, President Vladimir Putin chose National Flag Day to hail Russia's military glory and upholding of traditional values. The national flag, like the unfading red banner of victory, serves to educate the younger generation about the values of patriotism, citizenship and responsibility for the future of the motherland. Back in Ukraine, there is no respite. Kyiv acknowledged on Monday that nearly 9,000 soldiers have been killed since the start of the conflict. And despite pleas from the international community, bombs have fallen again near the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. These videos, supplied by Russian authorities, which have not been independently verified, show the alleged suspect in the death of Russian ultranationalist Daria Dugina, killed in a car bombing on Sunday. Moscow says the suspect, a Ukrainian woman, has since fled to Estonia. Vladimir Putin has described Dugina as a talented person with a real Russian heart, adding she proved by deed what it means to be a patriot of Russia. The 29-year-old is the daughter of influential Russian political theorist Alexander Dugin, often referred to as Putin's brain. There are suspicions he was the intended target. Dugin says our hearts yearn for more than just revenge or retribution. 
And my daughter laid her maiden life on its altar, so please win. Russia's security service accuses Ukraine's secret services of killing Dugina. Investigators have opened a murder case. Kyiv denies the accusations. Ukraine surely doesn't have anything to do with yesterday's explosion because we're not a criminal state and we're not a terrorist state. The presidential adviser also took to Twitter, saying Russian propaganda lives in a fictional world. And vipers in Russian special services started an intraspecies fight. The country says it's bracing for an intensification of Russian missile attacks to coincide with its Independence Day on Wednesday and in the aftermath of Dugina's death. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has filed his official response to the raid of his Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida by FBI agents. It's a lawsuit demanding that the documents seized by the Justice Department be overseen by a neutral third-party attorney known as a special master. The move cast the 8th of August search in which the FBI said it recovered 11 sets of classified documents from Trump's home as a shockingly aggressive move and asserts that the action took place even though Trump had been fully cooperative for weeks. Trump is being investigated for potentially mishandling documents. The Justice Department has countered in a brief three-sentence statement that the search had been authorized by a federal judge after the FBI showed there was probable cause to believe a crime had been committed. It said that it was responding court to the motion. Germany's 10-year bond yield has hit a new four-and-a-half-week high. It follows fresh concern that disruption to European gas supplies will keep energy prices elevated, ensuring inflation stays high across the continent. The European Commissioner for Eternal Market tweeted that he strongly advises everyone to limit the use of their air conditioner this summer. French supermarket retailer Carrefour is freezing prices on 100 everyday products. Small businesses are already making their own sacrifices. Before we used to bake bread five times a day, but now we've cut back to three. We have organized ourselves differently. This means that special breads are baked with the baguettes instead of on their own. But tightening the energy belt is not everyone's cup of tea. I think it's abusive. We do what we want at home. We pay for gas, electricity. We'll be cold. We'll put blankets on. We can always put on more jumpers, socks, mittens if we have to. In the UK, some electricity bills have nearly tripled in one year. A movement of people refusing to pay has gained momentum. £176. I'm going to put that money in a savings. Meanwhile, in Italy, core inflation, excluding energy, has jumped to 4.1%. As Italy heads to the polls next month, candidates will be forced to reckon with the cost of living crisis. The far right brothers of Italy, in coalition with Forza Italia and the Liga Party, are expected to come out top, with Giorgia Meloni set to become the next prime minister. Our correspondent, Georgia Orlandi, has more from Rome. For the first time in 100 years, Italy's general elections will be held in autumn. By 8 p.m. on Monday, all main political parties had to submit their official candidate list. Now, the electoral campaign, which is going to last a month, officially gets underway this week. You can tell by the campaign posters that you can see here in Rome. But the city is unusually empty. That's because most Italians are still on holiday. So this scenario is what awaits them when they come back to Italy's capital as well as to other the cities across the country. Now, among the main themes of these electoral campaign, there is the energy crisis, inflation, migration and the war in Ukraine. Two main coalitions will be confronting each other on all these issues. One is the centre-left and the other one is the one led by right-wing party Brothers of Italy, which also includes Silvio Berlusconi's Forza Italia and Matteo Salvini's League Party, which, according to recent polls, is expected to get a clear majority at the next elections. Although it's still a long way uh, to go and anything can happen between now and the 25th of September. Giorgio Orlandi for Euronews in Rome.